Good day, everyone. I hope you can see the white dashes of the birds as they feed along the break wall. And I noticed an early morning pair of kayakers out. And the, uh, I, I haven't been able to capture it, but every so often a big group or flock of those white, I think they might be just gulls, come and encircle them. It's quite funny. But today I thought for our vlog that I will show you uh, one of the ways I like to make easy little prints of seaweed I collect on the beach. I think I've shared a video a long time ago. I used this little, I used to be a printmaker, but um, when I sort of set that aside for digital art and other things, uh, all the heavy equipment, um, I discovered a thing called a jelly plate, which is a, a simple little inexpensive plate made from gelatin. Uh, and I use that basically to make prints of the various seaweeds and algae I find. So I think that would be today's video. Well, so let's head on down to the beach and gather up some seaweed and algae. Well, this is future Donna in the editing, and this whole day was fraught with mic problems, camera problems, etc. And I wasn't able to remove this bit without making much more work for myself. <laughs> so I just thought I'll edit in some talking here to let you know that it was still lovely despite all those setbacks. The early morning sun was shining. There is a lot of lovely sea items to find, seaweed and algae, and just sitting and enjoying the sun watching the birds and listening to the sounds of the waves. A neighbor even went by on their kayak and I was able to give them a little hello. But sometimes in editing, <laughs> this is what happens. And in order for me to get it done and to stick with my new schedule, this is what had to be done. <laughs> so with a wave to the neighbor and a sorry to you for this odd editing, <laughs> back to our video. I really do love a good beach comb. I mean, I literally comb our beaches every day, unless it's heavy rain, or if the snow piles too high, which has only happened a few times. But we are looking for good seaweed specimens. Of course, it's hard to not be drawn in by the beautiful shine of the interior of the conch shell. But yeah, see this type of rack, uh, W-R-A-C, I think is the general term, and there is serrated rack. Uh, I think it's called egg rack. It has like a bulbous, Let's see if you can find any. But what I also like to do is sometimes if I hold it up to the, uh, the sun, and let's hold this up to the light. These can be really pretty when pressed. So we'll take a sample of that. Oh, and here's an example of, this is the more now, I may be wrong. I'm sure there may be someone in the comments who knows seaweed better than I. But I believe this is the serrated rack. And I really like it because do you see how the little edges have the little serrated, really pretty lacy bits? So I'll take some of that. I do apologize, but now I lost the mic on my camera and on my lapel mic. But basically, I just had a fun little rummage around. I found some lovely seaweed. So let's gather that up and head back up to the studio and have some fun making prints of seaweed. Let's head on up. Oh, 
Well, we still haven't made it all the way to the house, but I just wanted to share with you. I swear sometimes I can tell I'm a creature of the sea because see this lovely bouquet of seaweeds and algae we've collected? It smells so heavenly. Oh, I can't help but bury my nose into it. I'm sure some people don't like the scent of the sea and the salt, but it smells like heaven to me. Now, how would that be for the bouquet for a mermaid's wedding? All right, let's make some prints. Okay, so in the studio, I'm going to show you, I have a couple of these. This is just the basic jelly plate and they come with this plastic and I always save that. And I just wanna show you that I keep the bottom plastic on, I take the top plastic off and just basic baby oil. When I'm done making prints, I just wash it off with soap and water and I always give it a coat of baby oil with a, a kitchen roll or paper toweling. And then um, that's how I store it. This one's a little bit newer. You can see how my uh, older one, very loved one. I mean, it looks a mess, but it's uh, it doesn't affect it. But sometimes you can see this is older, so it gets a few indentations after a while. I mean, they don't last forever, and this one's probably about three years old. Um, so, but for the cost, they're not that bad. So um, that's what we're going to be using today. So what I like to do when I do um, just simple prints, uh, and I just have some simple rollers. This isn't even a, technically a, a printmaking roller. It's just something I got, I think, out of a, at a big box art supply store but just basically something you can use to put uh, paint on. Now what I like to do for my simple prints, and I'm kind of sad because I was already, I, had, I thought I had the camera running and I didn't, but I already made this one print that I thought is really pretty. See, it's just the blue in the background and then you can see the, uh, the somewhat details of the rack here. And how I did that is, well, I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So what I do is for the um, background, you can use printer's ink but you don't need to use printer's ink because um, it also works well just to use basic acrylics. You can even use inexpensive acrylics like this that you get at a craft store. Um, I usually use inexpensive things for this. I wouldn't use my nice um, uh, Winsor Newton things because I even have like inexpensive watercolors. So to show you why I have watercolors is I like to put the uh, printer's ink or the acrylic as a background. And what I like to do is I take um, watercolor and just mix it however I like and then I'll either brush onto the actual piece of seaweed itself or I'll just let it trail through there as if it's trailing through the sea just just play and have fun basically and let it pick up that watercolor and because watercolor uh, kind of wants to repel a bit more off of the the baby oiled surface although you, you it soaks in the baby oil but this is um water doesn't really stick to this, so it sort of repels it in a way that gives it really pretty water-like details, I think. I'm not sure if you can see it here, but see the little details here, where it almost looks like translucent um, seaweed, and that's simply because watercolor was reacting with the um, membrane of this gelatin plate. Okay, so what I like to do is I like to use watercolor for the actual seaweed, so what I'm pressing down, I will put watercolor either watered down or directly on the plant. And then I start with a base. So I'll put down, so I think I'm gonna do some blues and greens. Just obviously colors of the sea. And putting it on somewhat thick. And then by putting, you know, multiple colors in, you get a, a more sea-like or beautiful uh, background and then really coloring in and I like even how the uh, the pattern the wheel will give it's very water like or I have things like this comb I have many of these I just opened this one uh, which you can you know either take straight across or you can shake it like that or you can take it straight these all make various patterns which would could be behind the seaweed but for now I'm just going to do a basic background in bluey green and then I like to take watercolor and paint it either by adding water and these are just cheap watercolors I wouldn't use my good Windsor Newton for this just painting it on or sometimes I'll take the color 
directly and put it on. Because the way the water the watercolor reacts with the acrylic paint and the uh, the jelly plate, it uh, gives some it can give a very aquatic looking bit. So I take the painted side and I'm just gonna set that down. And I don't mind if it drips around like that. Try to lay it out how you think it looks best. And I don't mind if I, if it gets a little imperfect here and there because I don't mind some smears and things because it's not perfect, nothing is. And then I also paint some more on the top. And then I take, this is just basic drawing paper, but we can also use, I have a heavier stock of paper, which is known as Bristol paper. And sometimes that will make a very good print. So maybe let's use the Bristol and put that, you know, you want to try to center it as well as you can, or use a piece of paper closer to the sides, which you can also do. So if we just put our Bristol down like this, and then what I do is you can just use the pressure of your hand, which I kind of do at first just to give it contact. So I know that it's touching so it can get the details around. You can feel under there where the seaweed is. So I just like to press around there. And you can even go over with a dry um, roller just to kind of press in to get more detail. Um, just to make sure it has contact. And then I take a stack of heavy books and then I actually sit upon it to give it enough, enough pressure to really give it a good print. So I'll shut the camera off and do that bit. So then we take our heavy stack of books off. Give it another little rub around the, uh, the raised areas of the seaweed or whatever it is that you are trying to get the impression of. And sometimes I'll even do something like I have like big things like this that you can use to sort of make sure you're getting the pressure. You could use a spatula. Basically you just want pressure down because you want resistance against the jelly plate. And then we peel back. This is the magic of printmaking. Every day is Christmas because you never know what you're going to get. And then we peel up and with this we have, which I think is quite lovely and of course you'll get more detail as it dries. You can see that which wasn't covered in ink gives you the white of the page and I like how it goes outside of the square a bit and then you can see as it this watercolor dries because it's more um, transparent should give you more details I'm not sure if it's really picking up on here so I think it's just a pretty color a pretty way of doing a sort of block print so then now that we have this we can take this seaweed off and now we have the ghost print which is what was left behind and we can do a print of that. Let's grab another piece of Bristol. And this is just basic Bristol paper. I think it's, uh, I'm not sure what the pound is. And then while it's still damp, for the ghost print, we're gonna set this down. Again, slowly making contact. You can use a roller or a spatula if you want to really make sure it's making contact. Now I could sit on it on this one as well, um, but it's not needed as much for the ghost print, but because here you're just trying to pick up the paint or the ghost of the image that was left behind. I actually decided to put the uh, books on and sit on it just for a second, just to be on the safe side. Okay. So now we peel back our image. And you can see we have, now it's a bit more abstract because this is not a perfect way of doing it. But I think these two images together, framed next to one another, could be really beautiful. And you can see some seaweed detail. So this isn't um, giving you an exact replica of the seaweed, but it's really just trial and error. As I mentioned the previous one I did, I thought this one worked out really well, where you can see more of the white of the page, which we can do. And instead of cleaning this off, I'm just gonna use some uh, paint over it, and that way some, some of what's left over can just add to our next print. So I'll just put some different shades of blue 
another shade of green in there. And then, now if you're using an ink, an actual printing ink, you'd want to build up layers in a thin way because the way, the viscosity of ink for printing allows you to get that detail. But I wanted to do it, and I often do do it this way, with inexpensive paint so that if anyone wanted to try this at home, they could do with what they probably have. You just need it a little bit thicker to get the impression. It's not as easy to build up with the acrylic paints that way. So let's just take another piece. I really liked, I'm not sure how the detail will get of this one. But let's just lay some things out. That's for the fun of it. Try our dead man's fingers. And a bit more of the rack. And now I'll just paint a little bit on this time so that you can see more of the white. And in fact, for fun, let's add a bit of a pink tone just to see what we get. Because again, this is playing and having fun, and this is a perfect time to try out color and mixtures. drawing paper this time. This is just basic drawing paper. I don't know the weight. I think it's just a medium weight. It's not as thick as the Bristol. But that's two pieces. And then we can put that on there. Actually, you know what? I bet I might do the Bristol because I think it's so thick I want a larger piece of paper and I don't have my large drawing paper in front of me so I'm just gonna grab it and I just realized my mic died, so hopefully the mic of my camera is picking this up. So if we just peel this off, thusly, you can see with the ghost print, it's quite subtle. I'm sure it's not picking up as well. But again, these two side by side could be quite lovely, matted and framed. And what I also like to do is to scan these and use them in backgrounds in digital artwork, or I um, will scan it manipulate the color, flip it around a few times, and then make a repeat pattern for wallpapers or wrapping paper. So I'll probably do some vlogs of that in the future. But for now, considering the uh, camera trouble I've been having, let's be happy with the uh, couple of prints I was able to capture. We have this one. See, this one's drying really nicely. I'm not sure if you can see the subtlety of it. And then we have the fun boulder one here. So now we can go hang these up to dry in the window and maybe end this video with a nice seaside quiet tea party. So we have our prints, some of our prints hanging up to dry in the studio. Don't mind the giant crack down the uh, this big window, but this is an old house and uh, many of the things need to be repaired. But this is just my studio, um, but you can see the sun is coming in and the prints are drying and you can kind of see here as the sun comes through how you can get a little bit more detail see the a little detail poking through as it dries and even this with the watercolor is starting to look a tiny bit better as it dries so but we have those drying up and we've had a busy day and i've set up some tea outside so let's go outside and have our reward of a hard day of beachcombing and printmaking and making videos let's hop outside and end today's video
Well, thank you for joining me for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. A bit of beachcombing and some lovely printmaking with seaweed. And now we can end the day with some lovely seaside tea. I hope you uh, will be happy to join me again. And remember to stay creative. All right, time for tea and dreaming of our next project. Cheers. <laughs>